So a really high resolution, high quality image that's highly customizable. You can change the size, the color, the shape, however you want to now. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using output from DSeq2. It doesn't matter what you're getting this data frame from. All you really need is a list of gene symbols, p-values, and logfold2 changes. So I know for those of you who love R, just bear with me and just go ahead and save this as a CSV. We're going to open it in Python. I'm going to go ahead and load the dependencies. And then I'm going to go ahead and load that data frame that we saved. And then we're also going to make a new column for the negative log 10 transformed p values. I'm going to pass the p adjusted values. So now we have this column. So let's go ahead and make the very basic scatter plot. All right, so we have this really ugly looking volcano plot. Let's first add some lines to show various thresholds. So we added a horizontal line at two and a vertical line at one and negative one. Let me just make those lines look a little more pretty and send them to the back. Now let's say you wanted to color certain genes based on a list of genes. So if you had a gene list of interest, there's a bunch of different cases you'll want to label specific genes. For this, I'm not going to make any specific gene that's why I imported random. I'm just going to pick a random set of genes. And then now we want to write a little function to pass a new column to our data frame with a new value to color the scatter plot on. So I'm returning nobody cares if the log fold change is less than one or the log 10 p value is less than two. And if the symbol's in picked one, I return picked one. If it's in picked two, I return picked two. And if it doesn't match any of those, I return I care. And then I'm passing the three columns of the data frame using the apply function to our map color. So if we look at that, see most of them are going to be nobody cares because most of them aren't differentially expressed. But let's go ahead and pass this color column to our scatterplot function. So we need to pass hue, which is going to be color, which just corresponds to the name of the column. We could just run this and it'll pick default colors, but I don't like these default colors, so I'm going to assign them. So we need to pass a hue order, first of all. And then we have to pass the palette. So what colors do we actually want to assign to these? And we need to pass them in the same order that we passed these. So if I want nobody cares to be light gray, I would pass that first and so on. Now we see all the insignificant ones are light gray. All the ones in picked one are yellow. All the ones in picked two are purple and all the rest are dark gray. Let's change the shape now, just based on another arbitrary list of genes. We're just going to use random again. I'm just going to make a pick three and pick four. And I'm going to make a new function called map shape. And we're going to do something similar to what we did before, except this time all we're going to pass is the symbol. But if you wanted to pass something else, you could do what we did before. You only have to use map, you don't have to use apply because we're only passing one column. But let's go ahead and plot these now. All we really have to do is pass style and shape because it's the name 
of this column. But here it's picking the shapes for us. So if I wanted to specify the shapes, I'm going to do it similarly to what we did with the hue, order, and palette. But instead of palette, we need to pass the markers argument. And we have to go look up what the markers actually correspond to which strings. So if you go to the matplotlib website, you can see which corresponds to what. So an O corresponds to circle, an up caret corresponds to triangle, etc. So to pick three, I'm going to do triangle. Picked four, I'll do a square, and everything else will be a circle. There you go, now we have different colors and different shapes. Finally, what I want to do is I can change the size. And for size, I'm just going to pass base mean. We don't have to do anything fancy here, we can just do size and then pass the column name. I don't really like how small some of them are, so we can change the starting and ending size with sizes and I'm just gonna go with 40 for starting and 300 or let's go 400. All right now you see there's a big variation in size and none of the points are too small because the smallest size is 40. Let's go ahead and move this legend all the way to the right side and make it look a little prettier. If you wanted to adjust it a little bit, you can just change this number. For example, if I did that, it moves it to the left. I did this, it moves it back to the right. Let's go ahead and label the top genes now. I'm going to use this adjust text package so that the text labels don't overlap. So I'm going to make a new list and then I'm going to loop over the whole data frame. And then I'm only going to label the top genes and log 10 value of above five and a log fold two change above two. Oops, I put the parentheses in the wrong spot there. So we extract these values from the data frame and see if they're greater than five or two. And then we append a matplotlib text object with the X value equal to the log fold two change, the Y value equal to the negative log 10 P value, and the string equal to the symbol. And then the adjust text function adjusts them and these just make it look a little prettier. The line style and the color is black. Let me just change the font of the labels themselves. So one final thing I wanted to do is just clean up these axes here, the labels, and make everything look a little prettier. So we made these lines a little thicker. I'm going to get rid of the top and right because I think that looks better. I'm going to change the thickness of these ticks to match the line thickness. I'm going to change the axis labels, make them bold and change the font size. And I'm also going to change the labels, the X and Y axis labels. So I've had to use a little bit of this matplotlib text manipulation. So I passed two and 10 as subscript. And then finally, if you wanted to save it, I'm just gonna pass face color equals white so that the background isn't transparent. And I can show you here. So really high resolution, high quality image that's highly customizable. You know, I did this with a random selection of genes, but you can pick any gene sets or change the size, the color, the shape, however you want to now.